my name is Anne Schneibel. I am a Pontifical student here in Rome studying communications and also I'm a freelance journalist here in Rome. I think as Christians we're all called to participate in the new evangelization either in our work or in our personal lives and our family lives or in our you know, or, or some of us are called to participate in an extraordinary way, either going on mission or uh, through community life and things like that. Uh, but that's kind of part of the mandate of, of Christ is that we all go out and evangelize. You know, now the new evangelization. I remember with the Synod on the new evangelization uh, some time back that you had this discussion on what does it mean to participate in the new evangelization? Are we evangelizing you know, those outside the church or within the church or is it ecumenical? But I think regardless of what it means, we are all called to be evangelists and spread the gospel to, to all of those around us. What is a new evangelization? Uh, that's, that's a tricky question because since, you know, since the time of Christ we've been called to evangelize. So, to, but I guess I suppose the new evangelization is kind of a renewal of our understanding or even just a renewal of, of what that initial call was in our lives and how to practically apply that. In today's society, you, know, you have uh, especially the challenge of new media, you know, everything is communicated instantly, you know, and there's, it's, we have so much to compete against, really, so much uh, from the secular world uh, that we, that media bombards us with. Uh, but I suppose it's, it's really a re-emphasis on not just the practical a application of evangelization, you know, how, let's, how, how do we evangelize through Twitter and how do we evangelize through Facebook or the internet or television or movies, all these are really important, but it's kind of going back to the essentials and realizing how in order to effectively communicate through these various new means uh, in a, for lack of a better word, competitive way, we have to be living it in a genuine way within our lives, you know, really living the gospel. So I suppose it's a return to that. All right, how do I evangelize? Well, uh, at the moment I'm working uh, part-time slash full-time as a freelance journalist here in Rome. And it, it's kind of a challenging thing because it's, you know, because I'm communicating the church, what's happening in the church. I'm meeting all sorts of different people from all around the world. Um, but at the same time, I'm evangelizing via, I'm, I'm literally evangelizing to a computer screen. So you don't really get that back and forth feedback, but that would be my, the way in which, one of the ways in which I'm practically evangelizing. I think what's, uh, what's been most interesting in this, uh, in this apostolate, I suppose you could say, is has to do with the people I've met and being able to transmit their stories. You know, I've met, I've had the opportunity, the the privilege of meeting people who um, have perhaps, you know, had an abortion or who were raped or who were uh, the product of uh, rape um, and who are now standing up for the faith and giving testimony and giving witness to the truth. Uh, some of these testimonies are very powerful for me. Also those um, who are working with men and women of same-sex attraction, which is a very a very heavy topic, a very important topic, especially in our day and age. And there's so much need for pastoral care and compassion that's tied to the truth and such a difficult challenge. And it's very uh, inspiring for me to meet these people and, and also really an honor to be able to communicate their message. Uh, so I really, I, mean, I, I hope I'm making an impact, you know, and uh, at least, at least in telling their stories. 
One of the examples of uh, having, having suffered to give witness to my faith is kind of a consequence uh, for me personally. It's a unique consequence of living in a foreign city, uh, just with a language barrier sometimes. I remember on one particular occasion, I was at dinner with friends and I was with one, uh, one person who uh, didn't speak Italian, which I speak fairly well. Uh, he didn't speak English. He only spoke a few words of English. Uh, he, was, um, he was from South America. And I remember he suddenly just started just attacking the faith, just randomly. And I couldn't, because his English was so broken and I didn't, it, uh, I didn't, you know, I don't speak Spanish or I understand a little bit. I couldn't, I couldn't, I was in a position where I could stand up for the faith. I think that was a challenging thing. And so it was just kind of one of those moments of just trusting in, in God and just being like, and hopefully my sitting here calmly is enough of a witness, you know, because there's, you know, there's no other words, you know, there, it's one of those examples of being a witness without, you know, without being able to speak. You know, this is, a, this is an interesting question, what to say to somebody who doesn't have faith. You know, I think it would depend, it always depends on the individual circumstance, individual person, the relationship. Uh, I think, for my part, like, as, a, as a general rule, I just try, try my best to live my faith. By living my faith, you know, truly and genuinely, really, in trying to make Christ a part of my life. You know, I, I, you know, I hope that is enough of an invitation for them to approach me and then use that as a starting point for engaging them and answering their questions. And then, I'll, of course, in turn, I have to make sure that, you know, I, I stay informed and have the answers to give them when they ask. Where do I get my strength to announce Christ? Um, I think the simple answer is Christ. You know, I, uh, at, at every opportunity I have to encounter Christ, uh, first in the, you know, in the sacraments, especially in Mass, in the Blessed Sacrament, uh, through prayer, just, uh, I find that I have greater strength when I set aside time for, for the Lord, whether it's in, bless, in front of the Blessed Sacrament or just even in my in my bedroom, you know, just have time for prayer, uh, and also, I mean, my family, my friends have all uh, have always been a good example, kind of keeping me keeping me focused and keeping me on track and on track, and always providing a good reminder, uh, kind of appealing to my competitive side, you know, I suppose, uh, trying to kind of motivating me to stay the course, as it were. Um, but so I think those would be the, the two main sources of strength for me. If you would like to participate in the next program of Cast Out Your Nets, sharing your testimony of apostolate and evangelization, visit our website at www.eukmommy.org for more information.